Red Rising by Pierce Brown. So we have this kid named Daryl, and he's a red, whatever that means. And he's a hell driver. So he has this suit, and he's this drill, and he pees in his suit. He's also married to this chick. Uh, she's like 14, he's 14. But they can't get married until they're 16 or something. She's a little bit older than him. And while they're in this this driver, they if they drive far enough, they win this trophy. But even though he drove far enough, he didn't win the trophy. And so his wife tries to cheer him up by taking him to the secret garden. But by taking him... Oh, I forgot to say. They're on Mars. Cool. So by taking him to the secret garden, they both get arrested because they're not supposed to be in the secret garden. They get arrested by um, Grays, I think. And then so they decide to kill her because they're in the secret garden. And so they ask her if she has any last words. And so she sings this forbidden song, which really, really makes her want to get killed. Not her, but makes them want to kill her. So brings up her sister and whispers some secret to her and not her husband, which is a little bit low blow, but they kill her. But on Mars, since there's less gravity, you have to pull her feet. So he runs over and he pulls her feet and kills her. And he's really upset about it. So he then, after they bury her, takes her out and desecrates her grave, which uh, is a big no-no. So they decide to kill him too. And he gets the same thing. They pull his feet. <laughs> But all of a sudden he wakes up and there's these people who call themselves the sons of Ares. And they're like, hey bro, you're good. We're going to turn you into a gold. Oh, and by the way, you were on Mars. You were way underneath and they told you that there was no civilization. But there's a civilization on Mars and they've been lying to you this whole time. So then there's a guy named Mickey and he decides to start carving him up. And he makes him into a gold. So he turns from this little guy of a red into a gold. Red to gold. He's this really beefy guy, and he starts taking all these tests, and he's doing really good. He only gets one wrong on the test, does all these push-ups, and trains with his sword. And so they send him to this institute, right? Uh, at the institute, this gold gives him a drink, which makes him fall asleep. He wakes up with his other dude in this tiny little room and realizes that he has to fight him in order to survive. So he kills this dude. He's not happy about it, but he kills him. And then they decide to start betting on all of these people. And they're like, hey, we'll give you 15 bucks for him and we'll make him a Greek god. So all these people become part of those houses. So he's in House Mars, of course. Other people are in Apollo, other people are in Jupiter, and they send him in this little, uh, kind of like the Hunger Games. It's an arena, and they told the goal is to mimic society and rise to the above and become primo. And how you become primo is... Uh, you have to get these little trophies. The Sovereigns. So he becomes best friends with this guy. The only thing that he, this best guy doesn't know is that he just killed his brother. So this guy's brother is dead. And just to be clear, that's the brother to that guy who's best friends to Darrow. He killed him. Darrow killed him. Right? He also becomes friends with this like wolf kid and they kind of try to survive right they're trying to feed off the land and if you get the the number of sovereigns and touch it or something you become a primo i think you need like four sovereigns and each one of these houses have a sovereign the thing that sovereign can do is if you touch it to any other player's head they become a slave all right so him and this guy Celsius. Kelsis, I don't know. They uh, become best friends and they decide to take the Apollo Sovereign and the house is run by a chick named Mustang. So they trick her and they take our Sovereign. And then Darrow has enough Sovereigns to become Primo, but they don't give it to him. And instead, his best friend finds out that he killed his brother, so he stabs him through the, the stomach. He's dying and Mustang, who just lost her house and everything, she decides to help him, and they start to team up together. They find the little wolf friend, whose name is Servo, and they decide to start going around and liberating all these different places that they couldn't before. And instead of creating slaves, they create free kids. House Mars has completely cut them off. People who control all this are called the Proctors. 
And so he starts talking to the proctor, and the proctor starts talking to him. I mean, that's kind of what happens when you talk one way to the other. The father of the wolf kid. Also, you have little rings on that they gave them when they became the houses. They can hear you. The other proctors can hear you through those rings. So he tells all his new little friends, and he's like, hey, take off your rings. So he can tell them a secret. They are going to take the jackal. The jackal is one of the uh, proctor's kids. So he gets these little golden boots after knocking out that proctor to where the proctors watch everyone, which they call Olympus. He stabs one guy with his reaper and one guy with his sword. <laughs> then he goes and gives Mustang a kiss. At this point, he gives Mustang Jackal and realizes, oh, they're brother and sister. I hope she doesn't betray me. Luckily, she doesn't. She brings the Jackal back. After winning everything, he decides to form an alliance with both the Jackal and Mustang's father. And she's really upset, so she leaves. The end.